Well, the last time I was sitting up here was when I bought the team six <laughs> years ago. So what an interesting ride the last six years have been. You go from the first year to uh, having the, the most wins in franchise history at 65. But I guess this year wasn't our worst year, was it? No, <laughs> no? not our worst year. So, so uh, we're making progress. Um, thanks, everybody, for, um, for being here today. Uh, this is an exciting day for uh, myself, the Houston Rockets, uh, and all of our fans. Uh, and I, and I, tr I truly, uh, it's, it, it, it's an exciting day. First off, three years ago, which was very painful, uh, Rafe and Patrick and other people in basketball ops came to me and said, we're going to make one of those tough basketball decisions uh, because we know you want to win a championship and we don't want to be mediocre. And basketball is unlike other sports is that you seem to be up here or down there and you don't want to be in the middle. And once you get in the middle, you seem to be stuck there for many years. Uh, and that's how the Houston Rockets were previous to James Harden. And uh, because you don't want to lose and get a top pick, but that's what happens. Uh, if you get a top pick, that's how you improve yourself. One person or two people can have such an effect on your team. So we endured this horrible, painful process and, and uh, decided that we were going to go young. And I have to say the fans have been unbelievable. They still come out and support us. Uh, the local media has been unbelievable. We told you all our story. Uh, you listened to it, you believed in it, and uh, we truly appreciate all the fans and, and everybody in our organization for, for, for understanding. Um, so here we are today. We have a bunch of young stars, and when you look at how other stars were that are today, how they developed in their first couple of years, we have four or five guys that are on pace to be, it looks like, uh, all-stars in a few years because when you go back and look at their history and their first two years of play and gosh and how bad they are <laughs> and how good they become but yet you can just see that great uh, talent level so we're we're truly excited we think Rafe and his team have done an unbelievable job in the draft not perfect but really damn good so uh, uh, really exciting I mean uh, they've definitely shown me um, they know what they're doing. And as much as those picks is that every year, if we would have had a pick early, guys that were not really on anybody else's board that went are all, and I, I'm not going to name them by name, but, but three or four people are really becoming stars in this league that, that uh, we would have taken that are kind of unknowns over the last few years. We've come a long way in the three years. Uh, developing these guys. I, I can't sit here because we're all an NBA family. Uh, what Steven Silas came in here and did for us in the three years that he was here and helped develop these guys. And, and when he didn't know exactly what he was getting or who he was coaching, uh, he's going to be a great asset to somebody else. And I just cannot thank Steven Silas enough and his wife and daughters for coming to Houston and help get us going in the right direction. And uh, I just can't help but think that. But now we're on to the, um, to the next phase, and, and uh, we're going to develop these stars. And uh, we've got free agent space this year. There's nothing like cap space, which we have approximately $60 million available. So when you mix these uh, new stars, um, these new young stars with the free agents, I'm expecting a lot from these guys here, so <laughs> uh, that's exciting, and it's 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 time to get a, to get on the right path. So over the course of this process, we got to really interview some some great coaches, and um, it was it was a it was a tough decision, but it wasn't because there was one person that that we just felt like was an exceptional candidate to take us to the next level, and. Um, we're, we're just a, a, so excited to have Ime. But he is everything that the Rockets were looking for. And, and we, we did so much due diligence on this gentleman going back to his playing days with people and coaching under Pop and coaching here and, and everything he has done. And 
the respect that he has from coaches, executives, players, uh, front offices is uh, we just we just got a glowing report, and and we're just extremely extremely happy. But what we like about him is his ability to coach a basketball team, and he's going to hold these guys to toughness, respectability, accountability, and and it's everything how I like. To, to, to run a business is structure and and everybody having the right guy that they can communicate with um, we're just excited it's it's a uh, phase two phase two is getting ourselves back into the playoffs learning how to win again and uh, hopefully soon I won't be up here for anything except to tell you how great it was to win a championship and uh, that's in phase three so let's have phase two right now. You've got a, you've got, you had to crawl, and now we're going to walk, and then we're going to run. But, but uh, we're all expecting a lot, and uh, I definitely think that uh, we have the leadership here between these two gentlemen, Rafe, Ime, and Patrick, uh, who tremendously does a lot, does a lot. So, and, uh, so thank you guys. Congratulations, Coach, and uh, a happy day for the Rockets. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you to P Tillman, Patrick, and Rafael uh, for this tremendous opportunity. Um, you know, I'm very excited to get started. A lot of what Tillman alluded to was obviously the young talent that we have on this roster, but a lot of things were very attractive about this job. And, um, you know, cap space is a big thing. A uh, chance to grow with these young players, and I'm excited to get out, get to meet them, spend some time with them, and start building those relationships. So I want to say thank you to everybody. And, Appreciate you guys for having me. Yeah, we just, you know, I'm, I'm happy to welcome Ime. Tillman did a great job of expressing why we're so excited. Um, I think he, I think Ime really aligns with me and the way I view the world and I view basketball. Um, and even more importantly, I think, I think it's going to be a really good fit between Tillman and Ime. I, I do think that the way Tillman, I know, I know how Tillman runs his businesses now. We've been doing this for a while. And, and, <laughs> and I think, I think Ime is going to be a great extension of that. And I think that's really important for success is to have everybody, uh, everybody thinking that the right way to do it is the right way to do it. So, so I'm really looking forward to it. We'll open for questions. Jonathan. Thank you. Ime, uh, you left Boston under a, a cloud and some controversy. What can you tell us about that situation and why do you feel it was right for the Rockets to hire you anyway? Well, I'd say in general, um, you know, like, like Tillman alluded to, uh, they've done their due diligence and homework on who I am as a person. I think uh, we spent quality time together, getting to know each other, and uh, we clicked pretty, pretty easily and pretty well. Um, but, you know, overall, you know, I, made, I released a statement months ago when everything happened, and you know, apologize to a lot of people for the tough position I put them in, and and I stand by that, and I feel much more remorse even now to towards that. And so, um, you know, I spent these last this last off season uh, working on myself in a lot of different different ways, um, improving in areas, chance to sit back, reflect, and grow. And I think uh, that'll make me a better coach and overall a better leader. But um, the situation, the matter has been resolved, and I can't really speak much about it. You, you had a chance um, maybe to go some other places. You're a candidate for other jobs. You kind of touched on it, but what's the biggest reason why you wanted to be here? You know, obviously this was one of the first to open up. Um, some other things opened up recently and uh, just took a big look at the landscape of what we have here in Houston. Uh, obviously a destination that's very attractive to players, um, but also just the young talent. It always starts with the, with the players. Besides these guys getting to know everybody, it, that, that was pretty natural off top. but comes down to the players and I think we have a tremendous amount of young talent um, you know sky's the limit as far as that uh, they talked about cap space and some of the flexibility we have and I think uh, they've done a great job uh, building for the future and so I'm excited to be part of that and look forward to the moves we can make coming up in the draft and free agency for Rafael or Tillman did the Rockets have access to the independent investigation that the Celtics commissioned you know we, we did we did diligence not just on him, but but on every candidate we have. We do it on every important hire, um, and so I, what I would say is that we we got comfortable that it was an appropriate hire and that we were comfortable in the process. But 
just the same way I wouldn't talk about exactly what we did with anybody else. I'm not going to talk about it with EMA. It's just, in my view, it's not, it's not appropriate. It, it was very important to me to feel good. And, and when I have questions, uh, and I always get honest answers, and, and I've had enough conversations with them to know how they feel about certain people and certain things, and they definitely have an opinion. And, and the NBA told me that they felt very comfortable with Eme becoming the coach of the Houston Rockets. And so that made me feel really good after a lengthy, lengthy conversation with them. And then for Ime, are you able to elaborate on, on the work that you said that you did and kind of some of that reflection and maybe what you learned from it? Yeah, I mean, just, you know, having that time off and uh, really a full understanding of how many people you impact by a, a poor decision. Um, that's, that's where you start with the ownership and accountability. You know, I preach that to the players, and so I have to take responsibility for my part in it. Um, took leadership and sensitivity training and some counseling with my son to help him improve the situation that I put him in. And so... I uh, spent the year, uh, you, you, can, you can grow from adversity, and I think I've done that this year if you spend it in the right direction or, or take the right steps. So there's a few things I've done besides others. Coach, just from reading up on you, you've had to work for everything you've had. You're the son of an immigrant. You had a grind it out NBA career and overseas. How has how hard you've had to work impact the way that you coach? Well, I think that's who I am, you know, from in, in my core, uh, you know. Adversity and overcoming obstacles is kind of who I have been growing up and definitely in my playing career. So, you know, I've, I've kind of touched every role as a player and, and even as a coach so far. And so I've been in a lot of different situations where I can, you know, somewhat understand what the players are going through. Uh, they respect that uh, honesty from me, but there's only one way I know how to be, and that's straightforward. And I think these young guys will respect that. But uh, to your point, um, you know, dealing with what I did this year, I think my playing career and things I've been through in the past have definitely helped me in that situation. Ime, did you know Rafael or Tillman before this process? And I suppose regardless, what is it about your partnership with these guys that potentially sticks out to you as far as what you can do in the future and why this was the right opportunity for you? I didn't know them specifically well at all other than in passing. Uh, obviously being in San Antonio for two and a half years as a player and seven as a coach, We've had a ton of playoff uh, matchups and, and uh, series with these guys. So cross paths for sure. Um, didn't know them personally well, but I think just I like the tight knit group that we have. Um, you know, these two, Patrick, Eli, and some others that I've met, we really uh, clicked pretty quickly. And I just like that intimate group that we're all on the same page as far as what we're trying to accomplish and the steps that Tillman mentioned. And so uh, that was very attractive to me. Like I said, it always comes down to the players, but getting to know these guys have been, has been great as well. First of all, welcome to Houston, Coach. Thank you. When you took over the job in Boston, you had five players that had 34 years of NBA experience. Coming here, you have the 11 core players who only have a combined 23 years. What is your yeah. developmental plan for these young players? Just trying to expedite the process of, of becoming professionals. I think, uh, you know, they heard me say it in the players. One of my first messages will be youth is not an excuse. And so um, across the board, I think, you know, whether it's making the same mistakes, not making the right defensive assignments, um, poor shot selection, all that stuff has to be um, addressed, but also improved on. And so understanding that we're going to take some lumps with our age and our youth, but my message to them will be that's not an excuse. You've been in the league, you've been taught, um, and that's my job to teach them and expedite that process. So understanding that, having some patience with that, just like I had to do in Boston. Um, you know, had to change some habits there as well, even though those guys were more, more of a veteran group and guys who had been around, but it's no different from anywhere else. And so look forward to doing that here. Hi, Cesar Proso from Today in the Radio. Um, Mr. Fertitta, a couple of questions, if I may. Mr. Fertitta mentioned uh, phase two and phase three, uh, phase two being the playoffs and phase three being a championship run. Uh, what's, what's your time frame or what time frame do you have in mind for uh, between phases, <laughs> if you could even put that in, in uh, you know, what, what's in your mindset, what is that? Question. <laughs> That's for Tillman? <laughs> was that for me? That's for you. That's for whoever oh, wants to answer. Yeah. No, we've discussed, like he said, um, the phases and, and the, the next phase is winning and being more consistent. Um, 
Patrick has, has been very open about the pain that they've had to go through these last two and a half, three years. And we're now we're on the other side of that and where we look forward to coming. And so the young guy's growing. I see I got a smart player here. He's, he's trying to get some playing time already. In the, <laughs> he's the only guy that showed up. But um, obviously, the young talent has to grow and take steps. And so that's my job, to help nurture these guys. But the addition of some veterans with the free agency that we have, I think it's only natural, the progression. Um, but these guys have to take steps. The pain has been there. You, 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 that should feel you. You know, you go through that. But it, coming out on the other side will obviously be, be beneficial for everybody. And that's my job to push these guys. And uh, last question uh, on my side: um, When, when, when did the Rockets become part of, or when, when did they get on your radar as far as you know, a, a new coaching job? Was it recently? Was it a, a, were they always on your radar for a possibility? No, just after the season. Um, you know, obviously. Houston and Detroit were the two that opened up immediately, and Toronto right after that. But um, you know, they reached out and contacted. Uh, they had done some homework behind the scenes, like they mentioned. And uh, for me, you know, I, I got an up close look. Uh, my first win with with Boston was against Houston here, um, but it was a hard fought game. Uh, if I remember, Jalen hit about eight threes on us for a guy in the scouting report that wasn't supposed to be able to shoot, and so. Um, <laughs> I got an up close look at them, watched them quite a bit this year. And then obviously when the process started, I dug into the film and, and really got to know their personnel much better. So as soon as the season ended, um, I was glad they reached out, a uh, young, talented team. And honestly, this is more attractive than a lot of the mid-level teams that kind of have that ceiling, that you know five seed ceiling, some teams that do reach out. I'd rather start with a young core group and try to build something great here. Ime, uh, Luis Ortiz from Telemundo. Um, I know that as a player you played in Argentina, so I'm curious, do you happen to speak Spanish? No. I, okay. did not, I did not play in Argentina. Oh, okay. There was okay. another Ime with a similar last name, and I always get that, like it was me, and, it, and I never played in Argentina. <laughs> All right, great <laughs> so to know. That's on my bio. If it was an MVP, claim it. <laughs> yeah, back when I was winning MVPs. <laughs> that's on my bio, but that wasn't me. I've been there, though, with Manu and some guys, so great country. Awesome. Uh, so now, as far as uh, what's coming up ahead, I mean, have you guys already sat down and have any talks as far as what maybe you would like to add to the team with free agency and then the draft coming up? Yeah, that was part of the, obviously, the interview process. And so we start with our guys that we have first and how we can improve them. But the cap space that we mentioned, we like to add some veteran pieces there. Um, shooting is at a premium in an area we struggled this year, so we want to improve that. And then just some contrasting pieces to what we already have, whether it's bigs. Uh, Alperin does some things really well, but we, we'd like to add some different types of bigs uh, shooting on the wings. But we have a ton of talent across the board, and it's my job to utilize that. Uh, Ime, right here. Uh, as you reflect on what happened in Boston, do you feel like the Celtics were justified in the actions that they took against you? Yeah, I mean, honestly, my, 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 my part in it was to take ownership and accountability for my, my part. Um, you know, they had a, ch had a choice to make a decision, and they went that route. And uh, my thing was own up to it, take responsibility. And, uh, you know, I served the suspension and had to, had to own it, honestly. So same thing I'll preach to the guys. I can't sit here and not, not take accountability myself. So it was their right to go about it however they wanted to, and that's the choice they took. And Tillman. You brought up the drafting the last few years. How else would you uh, uh, evaluate everything else that Rafael has done the last three years? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think uh, you got to understand, I, I, I worked with Rafael for the previous three years, and I never had a basketball meeting with, with Daryl that Rafael wasn't there. And, and I knew that when I asked certain questions, he's had to say, let me let you ask Rafael. So there was no doubt that that when we decided to make a change, that this was a person I was comfortable with that was always able to answer any question I asked. I could be on a phone call and explain to me how that's going to work. I mean, this whole complex thing of, of the way our caps work and everything. Uh, and, you know, it, it was always Rafael and Eli that I <laughs> that I had to talk to, so uh, I'm, I'm I feel very good. Uh, uh, Rafael is very easy to work with. Uh, Coach Silas always told me how much he enjoyed having Rafael's support. Never heard one negative thing, and and it's obvious uh, 
that he's done extremely well in the draft, the whole basketball ops team. And uh, have they been perfect? Absolutely not, okay? But just like a coach that called me to recommend another coach, he said, finding the right coach is like trying to draft the right player. And, and nothing is easy all the way around. But uh, I know this, that we really think that, that this is the right coach for the Houston Rockets. And I feel really comfortable with our head coach and I feel extremely comfortable with our general manager and our whole basketball ops team as well. I couldn't feel any better about the president of our organization, Gretchen, and, and Tracy who runs all of this. So uh, I'm very proud of our whole organization and that we have very little turnover in it. Ime, <clears throat> how much of what you've been through the past year and a half or so has helped make you a better man and a better coach. That's what I mentioned earlier, uh, the steps you take you know, when you're dealing with adversity, uh, there can be some beneficial things that come out of it. And so, you know, it would have been a wasted year if I sat back and soaked about certain things, but I took steps in a process to improve myself. Um, like I said, become a better father, a better family member to people I hurt. And honestly, I think going forward, those things that I learned and worked on will help me become a better coach and leader. So I looked at this as another challenge and then how am I going to handle this adversity? And so I, I feel like I went about it the right way and we'll continue to work on that. Can you share with us some insight yet on how you look at your staff, potential guys that are still here, adding new guys? How do you look at that right now, Ime? You know, I, I some of the things I did in Boston when I became a head coach, I wanted uh, a energetic staff, uh, you know, very hands-on, relationship-based, and relatability to the players. That was a huge uh, key for me. And so I looked to uh, find some of those pieces. I'll interview the guys that were here. I've heard good things about a lot of guys, but this was the first step here, and now we'll get to the staffing <laughs> shortly. Hey, Coach, can you can you just talk a little bit about your coaching style, what people can expect, uh, how you will approach? I know it has to do, obviously, with personnel, but for yeah. those who haven't really seen you coach. Well, my style personally is very upfront, honest, and blunt to an extent. Uh, I think the players respect that honesty, straightforwardness. Uh, you know, I'm a very relatable guy to the players, and that's what I try to build those relationships. Uh, they know I'm going to coach them hard and coach them the right way, and I think a lot of these guys respect that. So that's the first part. Um, you know, defensively, you know, that's kind of who I was as a player and what we did in Boston, that's almost second nature to me. But uh, just like in football, a great offensive coordinator should know the defense and vice versa. I think I enjoy the offensive side just as much and trying to utilize and get the best out of the players. And so uh, I like to be well-rounded, um, you know, like I said, straightforward and honest, and, and that'll always be the first part of how I coach. Hi, Ime. Uh, there's a likely lottery pick coming this summer, also, you and Rafael noted free agency and cap space. What about the current roster do you like and what excites you about that? I love the youth, athleticism, upside, potential, all those things. Uh, but now we have to take the next step and, and grow as players. And so um, yeah, it was really eye-opening to me when I got a chance to dig into the film. Uh, you know, I watched about 10 or so games leading up into the interview. And I thought I knew guys uh, hadn't crossed paths with a lot. And I've seen Kevin since, you know, he's from Seattle. I'm from Portland, so I know all my Northwest guys. So I've seen him since high school but and as you year at USC. But um, other than playing against him twice, I hadn't seen a lot of these guys other than, you know, on different stages. And so really became eye-opening guys. I didn't know much about Tari. Um, you know, obviously I saw Jabari in college quite a bit. But there's a lot of guys that have tremendous upside, a lot of versatility. And so it, the more I watched and talked to these guys, uh, got the insight on everybody, I, the more excited I was. And so looking forward to coaching these guys. Hi, Ime. Uh, your former Boston players spoke really highly about your ability to command a locker room and, and galvanize the team. How do you balance holding players accountable while also recognizing this, this will be some growing pains for still a young team? Yeah, I think it's building the relationships, um, spending time with these guys. And that's what I'll start to do immediately after this. I'm going to reach out to everybody. Uh, spend some time in the off season with them. And, and I think that's how you build that bond. Um, you know, they know I'm going to coach them a certain way. And I think you have to, as well as being hard on them, put your arm around them and love them up as well. And so it's that balance there. But um, everything comes back to communication, honesty, and then doing the right thing. We all know how to play basketball the right way. And it's just uh, taking those steps and being consistent with it. So that's who I am. Uh, I'll start building these relationships and getting out with our guys as soon as possible. Quick follow up. 
quick follow-up to that. Tillman, um, when you first took over uh, the team, there were some reports that came out about your potential unwillingness to spend, yet you spent some money on a, one of the top coaches in the market. What do you have to say for people who made that report that you know, you're not maybe as willing to spend as much money uh, as maybe other owners? I uh, just, I don't know where I didn't spend it. Somebody's got to <laughs> show me. We're the only team that, that uh, you know, has their own private 767 to fly around in. We're building a $70 million practice facility right now. Uh, we've been at the top cap every every single year. Uh, Daryl, in his three years, uh, never asked to go into the luxury tax because it says there's other penalties with it. And because all of our guys were not homegrown, uh, that's how teams get them, and, and they get into the luxury tax because you keep re-signing players. Uh, you know, that's – that's you know, anybody can write whatever they want to write. So. Hey, Ime, you're in the middle. Um, you had the – Tillman alluded earlier to the star potential of some of the players on this roster. You had the chance to coach two very talented three-level scorers in Boston and Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. Do you see any similarities between their skill sets and some of the guys on this current roster? And what were some of the key lessons that you learned in trying to help Jason and Jalen kind of get to their star potential? Yeah, there's definitely some parallels. Um, you just look at the backcourt, you know, Kevin and Jalen and what they can do. It's it's it's. Um, you know, one thing I would say to the players is not all player, not all men are created equal on the basketball court, and they, they do some natural things that others can't do. And so you just have to harness that, teach it the right way, and but as well as using their strengths. Um, it was very similar to Jason and Jalen. I, I talk about the success that a lot of these young guys have is oftentimes, you know, it's a benefit of what they do individually. You, know, you want to kind of nurture that into a team concept, but as well as using their strengths. And so that was the thing with them; they were individual. Great players, uh, a lot of success one on one, but you wanted to grow them as players overall. And I think we did that. Their assist numbers went up as well as ours as a team. They were not, or Jason more so, was not known as a defensive guy, but you have all this capability and ability to do that. And so it was just making them more well rounded. And so uh, I see the big picture and the potential in guys. They do some things naturally well. You want to build on that, but as well as making them well, more well rounded. And so I think I did that with them, and we have potential with a bunch of two way players here as well. How important was the process of this alignment between mm -hmm. you, Tillman, and Rafael doing this whole process? And how do you figure that trickles down to the rest of the roster, which is still young, still learning and growing? Yeah, I think it's it's the most crucial piece, honestly. Um, you know, I, I came up for most of my NBA career as a player and then obviously as a coach in the San Antonio system. And I saw the symmetry between front office ownership and, and, and coaching staff down to the players. And I think that's the only way it can truly work. So. Um, I've had a great example of that. Um, everybody's on board on, with the same direction. Take everything off the pe players' plates and just make it about basketball, make it easy on them, and let us worry about all the other things. And so I've seen it work that way. And obviously, with us meeting, it was pretty natural. We had some good talks, but look forward to building that even more. And uh, like I said, I've seen it done one way that's had a ton of success. And so we want to emulate that. Sure. So can you provide more info on the, the practice facility? Details about that, where it's located, the timeline for finishing? Uh, you know, I really screwed up. And, <laughs> and uh, we, we, we want to do a real formal announcement, but it'll be, we were hoping it would be ready for next season, but, it, you know, just with permitting and everything. But uh, it, it, we'll lay it all out for you guys soon, and it's really exciting. It's going to be great. It's in the gallery area, and... Uh, I think it'll be a great tool to recruit players. Hey, Coach, um, I know you talked a lot about helping these players on the court, but can you um, talk about your ability to be a mentor to uh, the players that are still young and still trying to find their way on life and helping them off the court as well? Yeah, I think not only my playing career, you know, that, that lends to certain things on the court, but I know what they're going through off the court as well, being in those shoes. Um, Obviously, I was a role player journeyman, so I don't have the same responsibility as some of these guys, but we've all been through it, and I think that's a benefit that I can relate to them on those those topics. But as well as this past year, you know, being honest and upfront about what I went through and um, how your actions have consequences. And so those things are, you know, I can be a prime example of that, but at the same time, how you can uh, kind of tackle that adversity and come out on the other side. And so, you know, the one thing I did learn is a true definition of resilient, being resilient. I, you know, most people talk about 
how you overcome adversity and come back from it. But what I learned through this process was being resilient is really avoiding putting yourself in certain situations in the first place. And so talking to these guys about those things, uh, some of the things I went through and how they can benefit from it. Coach, um, during your tenure with the Spurs, you had a chance to coach one of the, maybe the best Hispanic player in history. Uh, here you find some international players also. Uh, how important for you it's to look abroad for talent recruiting? Yeah, I think it's huge. It's, it's something that obviously has started a long time ago and I had a chance with, you know, play and play with Tony Parker and, and Manu Ginobili, even Timmy being, you know, from the Virgin Islands. But San Antonio was at the forefront of that, but I think the league has caught up to that. A uh, ton of obviously great players. My father's Nigerian. I played with the Nigerian national team, so played in uh, world championships myself and have seen how much the game has caught up abroad. And so these guys, you know, will be down the doors trying to find the best players. And I think uh, not only in the homegrown talent, every team around the NBA, you see the numbers growing with the incredible uh, foreign players. Coach, when the news broke about you being hiring, uh, being hired here as the new head coach, um, a lot of your former players in Boston and even the uh, head coach there now had a lot of positive things to say about you. A lot of th uh, he said that second chances, he believes in second chances, second opportunities because he w benefited from one. When you hear things like that, how does that make you feel? As far as even though the things that have been said about you in the past, but moving forward. Yeah, I think it's big. It's it's really the, the character of who you are is the people that really know you, um, not only in a tough situation, but throughout the years. And Tillman said it, he's talked to people going back to my playing days, obviously coaches who I've worked with. And then to hear those things is big. It's, it's, it's what means the most to me, uh, the relationships with the guys and ultimately seeing them do well is what I do it for. And so, you know, to hear the players come out and say that, got texts and calls from everybody I've coached across the board along the way. And so that's what it's all about to me. Um, you know, I don't get caught up in speculation and social media and things that are being said and people that don't know the truth. And so uh, more so the people that know me are, are, is what's important to me. And so that's the same thing with the players. And it's big hearing them say that about me. Coach, Coach you spent a lot of time in San Antonio in terms of that culture, that team first culture. How do you plan to implement some of those teachings into this young team that's still going through those, those early phases and hasn't been able to build those winning habits for two or three seasons? Yes, I've, I've, I've kind of touched on it. You know, everybody grows at a certain pace, but we want to kind of expedite that process. And guys have been in the league now, and, and they're young, but um, they all have a tremendous amount of talent. Same thing we had in Boston last year. A lot of individual play. It was kind of your turn, my turn. We want to have more of a team, co team concept here, as well as using guys' strengths. And so um, you know what wins. Everybody knows it's no secret, no secret formula to it. It's uh, defense wins, um, obviously, team basketball. and then using the strengths of the players. So that doesn't change pretty much from anywhere. And you've seen success. And I've, I've been a part of that. And obviously, San Antonio and other places. We're going to take two more. Jerome? Uh, yeah, Tillman, I know you mentioned weighing all the factors in and doing your due diligence. Um, and let me just mention people that don't know the truth. You had, you had to weigh in, in the possible people who have backlash toward the hire, not, not a, in a basketball sense, but you know, with the situation in Boston. How did you weigh that? Have you seen some negative reaction from any of your season ticket holders? And what is your response to some of those who say this second chance wasn't warranted? Then they're not a good Christian person. Uh, if somebody thinks second, we're a, we're a forgiving society and everybody makes mistakes. And, and you know, some things uh, maybe we shouldn't forgive people for, but, but uh, I think what what happened in his personal situation is definitely something we forgive for and uh i discussed it with uh, the president of my organization who is a woman and 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 she was very comfortable with the situation as as well talking to to Paige about it and and uh we're a forgiving world and anybody that isn't forgiving then then shame on them Email Jeff Van Gundy said that you have a special way of pushing players hard, but still being able to make them feel important to the overall success. How do you make that all work? Just being who I am, honestly. Like I said, I've I've touched on a ton of roles as in in my career, whether it was playing in the G League, uh, overseas, in the NBA. I started for a year, been a more of a bench player and the 15th guy at times. And so, you know, I had a mentor who was really good at that. Obviously, Coach Popovich. Um, put his hands around everybody and made everybody feel wanted and special. And so um, 
you know, I heard something once about you spend 75% of your time with 25% of your players, and I kind of subscribe the other way where obviously I'm going to coach my guys hard but uh, touch everybody and, and make everybody feel special. Um, everybody's playing for something, has a different role, but you have to love them all up, uh, make everybody feel special, and I think that only brings you closer as a team and uh, helps you become better. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. you know, in, in, in my six years of, of, of uh, having this basketball team, there's no player that I've enjoyed more talking off the court, even during the games, than Kevin Porter right here. And, and uh, I just want you all to know that because I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. So thank you very much.